Well, what about places where there has not been a disaster? How, how do we get the service uh, industry to really sort of grow? How do you get people to really want to work and to contribute to communities where there has not been a disaster? Because isn't the whole idea to perpetuate this idea throughout the country and in communities that have needs, but maybe they didn't have uh, something as devastating as a flood? Well, look at this. I mean, you all were in it before Katrina, and you're going to be in it long after the BP spill. And, you know, I, um, I'm going to age myself here, but the points of, I remember the points of light speech. And I remember when he whipped me, and then if I remember the AmeriCorps. I mean, this is, it's part of, it's not a, city thing or a partisan thing. It's part of our heritage. It's how we built the country. It's kind of in our DNA. So you, what you're learning and the, the, the rapid growth, the expansive growth of, the, of, this, of all of y'all over a short period of time is testament to how it can go from city to city. There's a, I don't think, in fact, you know, I, I want to make a pitch here for Detroit, another great American city. I, I grew up in the Midwest and in Chicago, and I, I, Detroit was one of our hot spots in Motown. I just, and that, that's a city there that it, one quart, quarter of this room went there and stayed for six months, you'd make a hell of a difference. I mean, and that's, it's not, we, every city has something like that, but we can move from, and, and, and teach each other, teach each other. James, is yeah, you know, yeah, I just, uh, uh, what I've noticed about people at volunteer service or something like that, they actually like have more fun than other people. I mean, it's like, God, you're going <laughs> down there and working people. in that heat, and it's like you're wearing a hair shirt. Actually, I bet you most of you are having the time of your life. It's actually fun <laughs> to do that. And, and I mean, that's one of the things is that there's no reason because you're doing good things that you can't have a good time. That's you know? true. That's yeah, a very that, good point. Yeah. Somebody talked about the intergenerational part of this whole thing, especially right after Katrina, seeing the older folks right next to the younger folks working. But that seems to be probably a challenge, though, in trying to get people, the younger folks interested in service. Um, somebody said that uh, in some advocacy uh, programs, you have to make it sexy. So do we have to see Snooky out uh, <laughs> volunteering to make it sexy for the the new generation or i mean how do you how do you I, that? this maybe we're peculiar but the the reason that we are number one in the nation of school reform urban school reform is because of young people if you don't think teach for america is a service industry they work 90 hours a week for about 20 hours pay i mean and they follow these kids home there are this is a town uh, it's a brain magnet. Young people come and they stay and they, there's, there's no snooky in it for them. It's really, uh, and they come up with new ideas too. There, it's, we cannot thank our young people enough right. in this time because we don't have enough energy to do half of what they do and they're a really amazing group. Here. I, it's a little out of my demographic and you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm 66 and married, but I, I hear tell if you go down Frenchman Street or you go to the F&M uptown or places like that, there's a lot of action there. Go ahead and have a good time. <laughs> it's out of his leap, but he knows the names of every place. <laughs> Not to mention the, the French Quarter, there's a, lot, there's a lot of good places that you can, you can enjoy yourself after you put a hard day in on. <laughs> But, but seriously, clearly we, you know, this has to be, um, the, the idea of service has caught on in certain areas, of course, but then there are other places where it's probably lacking. And does Washington play a role, James, in trying to sort of highlight uh, service and make it uh, something that is worthy well, of? Look, I mean, President Bush had points of light and right. President Clinton had to, to sure. It, it, it's not like, there's not like one magic thing that is gonna, you know, turn the whole thing around. It is, it is a variety of things, but I think the thing that, and, and again, I think as Neil pointed out, in 1990 there were 30 million volunteers, today there's 60 million. Come on, you're making some progress. Take yes for an answer. And uh, look at all these people here. I mean, that, this is a lot of people to come down here in June. I mean, it, it, it's remarkable. <laughs> um, I, I think 
that the, to me, my, my big thing is, is that when people realize, hey, this is cool, this is fun, we're actually enjoying ourselves. And then more people will want to do it because you see, in a particular place like this, if you do something, you see the result of it. If you sort of volunteer and it's a big museum and you print name tag, or something, you don't see the result. Here you, you actually see the house, you see the block, you see the place that you've cleaned up, you see, you get a, that real sort of emotional income that comes with doing something and see the progress that you've made. What about your own daughters, Mary? How do you sort of inspire them, or have you? Because, I mean, you talked about the school. You have a teenage girl. Know, we don't almost. inspire them. They're like, <laughs> whatever, Mrs. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. It's a dork they're, thing. I'll <laughs> if you're for it, they're against it. We know yeah, that. I, if I just wait, everybody asks me for a restaurant recommendation, I'll give you a good place to go eat lunch, Cafe Reconcile, which is this terrific place that was started by this Jesuit where it really trains very hardcore, disadvantaged urban youth in restaurant skills and things like that. And it's a delicious place to eat lunch. And if you go, over tip. <laughs> <laughs> over tip. Over tip. If and you it's take, good. You take anything away from And it's real down home, no one's cooking. So one last question before we wrap up here. Uh, would you say that New Orleans now is, is, is almost back to where it, it was before? No, long way to go. Well, I, it, it, the way that I would describe it is it, it, a third of the city, if anything, is probably better than it was before. A third is getting better, and a third is long range. But, and I think we will emerge, we're starting to, and I'm convinced that we will emerge as a better place than we, than, than we were. I don't think, I really I agree think that. beyond even emerging as a better place, I think we're going to be the APRI center of urban renewal and rebirth. And uh, uh, much credit goes to Mitch Landrieu for that, but uh, uh, much goes to the citizens and the volunteers that are, live here and the ones that come and keep on coming. And I, I know it's going to be, I can see it. I want to add one thing to the last thing you said about kids. If there's one thing I think we could do, we don't proselytize to our kids. If, if, One's a Democrat, one's a conservative. I don't know how that happened. I mean, we don't do it. <laughs> but we always took the, take them voting. You know, like you start at a young age and you impose the value of uh, active citizenship, which is what service and volunteerism is, and it's just part of their value system. That was lacking up in, you know, now it's part of their deal, and just keep doing that with your kids, and they'll do it to their kids, and you'll be 120 million in no time. There's nobody that appreciates life more than somebody who, who almost died. So we really appreciate the fact that our city is around because it, it, it wasn't a given there for a while, I promise you. Well, so, so many of the rest of us appreciate that this city is coming back to life and is what it is, and so much of it is because of folks like you, Mary Madeline and James Carville. Thank you so much. We could sit here and talk all day, but I don't think, don't think they want us to. So thank you both. Thank you. And great being in New Orleans. Thank you. Thank you so much.